Hey guys, welcome to a uh, Stitch With Me with uh, the Dachshund. Thank you guys so much for coming today, or both the stream and watching it later. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to use the roller frame today. There's some issues with it that we're going to talk about uh, as we uh, stitch. But uh, today we're just going to work on Dachshund. I worked on it some last night, and I wanted to make some more progress on it. So you can see it here. Uh, we're working sort of in this general little area right here, but it's time to make some good progress on it. So we're going to be... Uh, kind of trying to uh, get a little bit more done here as well as going underneath there. Although, what did I do with the purple? I had the purple right here somewhere, but anyway. Uh, but there's lots to talk about. I got lots uh, to discuss. And uh, if I look sleepy, it's because I am. It's like 8.30 and I just woke up at 8, which never happens anymore. And so I got a lot of sleep that still wants to hang on to my face. So hopefully I'll wake up a little bit more. But otherwise, I think it's going to be a very chill stream because I am very chilled right now. So, oh man, but as people filter into the chat, we'll start up here. But hi, while we're filtering into the chat, I need to find my purple stitching stuff. It's got to be in the big old bag here. There it is. I got it. Ta-da! My mass of purple. Uh, I stretch my back. I took some ibuprofen, so I think I'll be good for a while. We're going to stitch for a good old two, three hours or so. Actually, we're going to talk for a good two or three hours or so, and then, and then we'll be good. Why did I bring that forward like that? I do not know. Sometimes I do not know what I do. Um, let's see, should I highlight? I need to highlight where I'm at a little bit better here. Do I have a highlighter? I thought I brought, there's a highlighter. Um, let's fold this over, make it easier to see. And, uh, I actually got dressed for the stream. You can't see, but I'm actually wearing jeans. Usually I'm, I stream in pajamas. And, uh, one, two, three, four. So, which is my most comfortable attire. But today I decided to get dressed because, well, because I needed to wake up. <laughs> and uh, that's a surefire way to wake up. Let's see what kind of progress we're going to make today on this old bit of old dachshund. Good old Coco here. Coco the rapscallion. Nope, not that one. Not that one, Jules. Remember? We're doing this over here. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Daffy. Good morning, Nitty Nat. How are you doing? Um, Margie, if you're here, thank you for following. Really appreciate it. I'm just babbling along to myself <clears throat> as we get started streaming here. Um, I'm super sleepy because I just woke up and uh, I can't believe I slept as late as I did. It's ridiculous. I never sleep this late, but I did today. Ah, good morning, boys, mom. Good morning, Mindy. Good morning, cross stitcher. Hello, hello, welcome. For those of you guys who are new to the stream, thank you so much for uh, coming on by and saying hi and seeing what we're all about today. I'm going to be, I can guarantee you I'm going to be super chill because I'm still trying to wake up uh, from this morning. What's up, Ruth? Um, and we're going to work on Dachshund today. So I'm not going to work on the uh, roller frame so much. I've had some issues with the roller frame. If Needlebug shows up today, or if Needlebug is able to make it today, that's a better way of saying it. Um, I, I've got a couple questions uh, for her about my frame. I've tried to put uh, Rainy Waterloo Place on it, and I can't quite get it tight enough. I'm not sure if I'm just not, if my technique is wrong or if I'm missing something. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out here. But uh, I still haven't gotten my new roller bars from uh, from where I ordered them, and um, so I'm a little I'm a little like ah because I took Reaper off the roller frame and put uh, Rainy Waterloo on the water on the frame. But now I, I'm not really sure if I can stitch with it because it's really loose. So um, but it looks great. Hold on. I don't know if you guys can see it through the small one, but that's that's what it looks like. I put it on. Um, long ways. It didn't fit the other way, but I put it on long ways. And uh, the issue, let me put, bring it forward here. The issue with it, is you can see how loose it is. Hey, that, that bugs the boof out of me. But the tighter I try to get this, I, I actually kind of warp the, the rods. Um, they try to, they're bending. So I'm doing something wrong. And uh, 
but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Hello, Crap Shack. What is up? Oh, that's awesome, Nitty Nat. Yours is like that too. Oh man, maybe that's just how it is. What's up, Flaminata? How you doing? Oh, that is awesome, Kate. That is fantastic. You made a frame and stand out of PVC. Um, cheap knockoff, but you got almost a thousand stitches in three hours last night. Good to hold you over until you can get a legit one. What happened Thursday this last week? Th uh, Lucy, what basically happened was um, my uh, husband made an appointment for a handyman to come over Thursday morning and uh, uh, kind of walk through the house and look at everything that we kind of wanted to get done, fixed up with the house. And then he ended up having to go up to um, uh, Estes to take care of some uh, family issues for me, basically. Um, so we kind of crossed over there and, um, anyway, he had to go run. And so I had to see the, um, uh, the handyman and they came right in the middle of when I would, they were going to come right in the middle of when I normally stream. So I was like, I could start streaming early, but I wasn't sure. If, I wasn't, we weren't hundred percent sure when they would be able to come over. So, and then it took longer than we expected and, uh, because they're clients. And so of course they're clients because I know everybody in this town apparently. And, uh, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so it was funny. And, uh, but anyway, so that's why I couldn't stream on Thursday and I'm sorry about that. But, uh, we were, uh, we were, we had to, we had to get that part done. So, <sighs> I'm tired. I'm so sleepy. Flaming Ada, almost a 50% of your project. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Um, anyway, I want to go back to Cade. I'm um, doing a thousand stitches in three hours. That's amazing. That is awesome. But you can see, like, for whatever reason, I mean, I, we know the reasons, but um, frame stitching can be really fast if you can get adjusted to two handed stitching. It really is. Now, I tried with my Nerge, which I did not bring upstairs uh, with me today. But I've been trying to stitch with my nerves, and it's just not the same thing. I think it's because it's just maybe I probably have to um, maybe sit in a different chair when I use it because I kind of I shift around so much that the frame doesn't stay stable, and it's harder for me to stitch quickly. Hey Val, what's up? Hey Cars, what's up? Um, yeah, two-handed stitching is really working. Once you get used to it, it's actually a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. That is awesome. Uh, Mindy says, I was having a terrible time with two over one tent stitch because of all the confetti and it was my first time tenting. I was about to chuck it and start over until you saw Nitty Nat's video, so thank you. That's awesome. Guys, Nitty Nat is a, another uh, floss tuber. So, um, Nitty Nat, is it the exact same name for your floss tube channel? But definitely somebody else to check out uh, for... Um, uh, uh, just all kinds of great things with uh, floss tube. That is awesome. Fluminata says it's a 60,000 count or 60,000 stitch full coverage piece of a Kingfisher as a memorial piece from a mom who passed last December. That is awesome, dude. That is so cool. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Got my big old tub of diet here. I need it. Wake myself up here. Oh, I wanted to start stitching about half an hour ago, but I only woke up at 8. And I know that didn't sound crazy to some people, but I haven't slept in to 8 in I don't know how many years now. So that was weird. So weird. And I went to bed at the right time last night, so I got 10 hours of sleeping in, which I think I needed, but still, my brain needed it. Tenting is half stitch. Instead of a full X, you're doing like one part of the X. Hey, Kim, what's up? Craze here. How's, how's Nala doing? How's Nala doing? And Kim, you'll get there. You'll get there. Just keep working at it. Not quite as a good of a view today. Well, that's not true. It's a good view today. Since I start, just, since you guys said it's better if I pull back on the on the stitching, then I can show y'all what I do. I can show y'all what I do. 
What's up, Apollo? Apollo mom. Able to catch my stream for a while working at a boardwalk. Oh, cool. Store. Oh, working at boardwalk store in South Jersey and it's raining. No customers now. Hoping for the rain to stop. Starting crane in Vandy Hand on Etsy. First full coverage. Didn't know what cloth to use. 14, 16, or 18. 50 colors. Watch all of your back streams over and over. You are awesome. Thank you so much. That is fantastic. Um, gosh, that's awesome. Uh, so you're in South Jersey. Wow, that is cool. It's raining. So is that, that's separate from, yeah, the hurricane already passed through. So man, we could use some rain here. I got to tell you, we are so dry. Um, we're starting to pop up with little fires here and there in, uh, in the mountains and it's not good. So hopefully we can get some rain at some point, but this is the driest summer we've had probably for two or three years at least. And so the bees are not doing well because of it. They're really struggling. We're not I'm not sure how much, if we're going to get any honey this year, but we'll see. Um, did I, are you asking me, uh, Craft Shack, did, um, did I see your hint for the Q-snaps? Oh, I heard through the grapevine you need to put the rods in the dishwasher to tighten them up. I don't have a dishwasher, so haven't tried it yet. Really? My dishwasher doesn't work. we got to replace it. And so... Or is that the Q-snaps? Or is that the frame? Is it the heat? Nala is after the robins. Oh, she's laying on you after hearing your name. Nala, Nala, Nala. Nala, Nala, Nala. Who's a good Nala? I love that name. You can't help but... Uh, ah, okay. You can't help but have a pleasant thought in your mind when you say this, the name Nala. Q snap clips can go in the dishwasher. You don't think would. The snaps, it's the heat. Ah. Ah. Cool. Tangly, tangly, tangly. That's what happens when I put them in here. Whoo, guys. Oh, man. So, now that a lot of you guys are here, so. We've had a bit of a hiccup in the whole process. We were talking about, you know, moving and we're packing and doing all this stuff. And I ran into a massive roadblock yesterday that I had totally forgotten about. And the massive roadblock has to do with what we're doing at work. And uh, in order to get the massive renovation and project that we're doing at work, um, I had to kind of include the house in that as some, uh, what do you call it, collateral or whatever. So... Yeah, I don't know if we can actually sell our house while we have the financing going on for the uh, for the renovations. Um, basically, the bottom line is is that the bank has a position that I don't know if it's going to allow us to actually get like move from one mortgage to another. Certainly not in the way that we wanted to. Certainly not in the way that we felt like we could do it and move out quickly. Um, so. Anyway, bottom line is uh, we're on hold right now. We're waiting for emails back from various individuals to clarify our position. I can't believe that I totally forgot about that. I, I totally remember now that when we did the deal, when we were trying to secure all the, the financing and everything for the project, saying to myself or saying to the, you know, oh, well, pff, we're not planning on moving anytime soon. So <laughs> that was six months ago. How can I not remember that? And so anyway, so yeah, so we've done like, I can't tell you how many hours of work in the last month and now we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so uh, anyway, what's up, Maine? Maine understands difficulties when you're moving. And so, oh man, Lucy says, next project you're doing is Stormtrooper Black Ada. Nice. Good luck with the black Ada. I had a hard time. I did navy blue Ada once, and it um, it was kind of hard for me to work with after a while. Would the Q-snap trick work if you filled the kitchen sink with super hot water then? I don't know why you couldn't try. Aw, Nala's wearing her official ESA emblem. Oh, that's cool. Emotional support animal for those of you guys who don't know. That's awesome. Hey, what's up, Maine? Hey, Marina. Uh, 
Oh, that's sorry, Kim. Sorry your current landlord is being a an emoji there. Oh no, man. Oh man. Oh you guys cannot cut a break on this. Oh, you guys cannot cut a break on this. Oh, dude. I am so sorry your house sale fell through. Oh man. Dude. That bites. Now, did you guys go ahead and move? And are you now, like, in, you know, in a bind? So the only thing with our issue is that we just have to stay put for at least a six-month. Yeah, maybe next time. Hopefully. It's always, like, about the right person. If the right deal, the right person has to come along. But so we're... We've kind of, you know, readjusted ourselves to the idea that we're going to be here for another six months. Now, the great news is we've really cleaned up. We've moved a lot of things out. So there is um, a lot more room in some ways. Um, but I packed up a bag of cross-stitch stuff with all my with all my uh, thread and everything that we got to go over to the storage place today and find it so that I can get it back, so I can get back to doing more projects and stuff. So, oh, man. <sighs> good gracious that's tough man that's tough so yeah our situation is not bad it's actually fine um, and it's good for us to take a breath and step back and and we can just focus on we can actually just focus on getting some of these things done ourselves uh, in the house and not rushing things so um, so we're fine we're good focus on one major thing at a time right oh man All right, oh, stretch the back. I saw that um, Purple Sharon was streaming yesterday, and uh, I saw that pop up. But I, I was uh, was at work. I couldn't I couldn't hop on. But that was cool. You're doing Pattern Keeper for the Stormtrooper. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, after the inspection, they wanted you to fix stuff or lower it another twelve thousand. You're selling it as is. You're not doing anything else to the house. Exactly. Yeah. So their realtor needed to do a better job of telling them as is means as is, and um, that you're taking into account um, by selling it as is. You're taking it into account that things need to be replaced, but usually you offer it at a lower value than you can normally sell it for because of that. So, um, but yeah. That's a bummer, dude. That's a real bummer. That stinks. <sighs> All righty. So um, I think enough people are here that we can um, get into a bit of a discussion because I wanted to pick y'all's brain. Um, I'm telling you guys first before I tell anybody else. Um, I teased it during the um, Thursday uh, floss tube update. But um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys because I could use some input. But I am basically learning how to design. Um, I am uh, kind of getting some, uh, learning some stuff. Uh, what's up, Sheila? Um, uh, basically uh, designing cross-stitch patterns. And my hope is that I can kind of do some things that very few other people are doing, kind of you know, sort of the same way that I did my, my channel when I started that with full coverage and things I was, I was doing a channel that very few other people were stitching those kinds of projects. Um, and now I'm kind of like, well, what, what should I be designing? What should I be doing? I've been learning the process for the last two, three weeks and put a lot of hours into that. And it's so much fun, but, um, I don't want to do the same old things that everybody else does. Um, and not that that's bad, but I just don't think that that's what I would be happy to designing. So, um, you know, what, what kind of things do you guys want to stitch that you haven't seen stitched? Um, what sort of projects do you think would be cool to do? Um, and, you know, just throw out some suggestions for me if you wouldn't mind. I'd really appreciate it. Um, just because I'm, you know, I'm really having a good time, but, but I'm not sure what I want to actually publish. And, uh, but, and it's because I have to do 5 million things at once because that's my brain. Um, but 
I, uh, yeah, so anyway. So that's what I've been working on some. And although I have gotten a fair bit of stitching done, I did a lot on Reaper um, on Thursday before I switched over, or I tried to switch over to uh, um, Rainy Waterloo. And I'm still going to, I'm still going to try and stitch on this. And so, but then I did, I started back up on Dachshund. And, uh, but now I got to go get all my floss from the storage place. And I can do other things because there's no reason why I can't get back to doing, you know, a couple extra projects here and there. And I really want to do, really want to do it. While, and especially while I'm waiting on my, um, whatchamacallit, uh, all my rods and everything back. There we go. All right. Has everybody gotten their update for Pattern Keeper by now? I would think that would be out there for everybody. Oops. Oh, I'm so sorry, boys, Mom. The Doxy has a ton of color in it. That's the cool thing. I love it. I mean, and it actually has little wings. And so. They're either little wings or they're like funky collar for the clothes he's wearing. But, uh, or she's wearing. She just had a little clothes on. But yeah, I really like it. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting more progress made on it to the point we can actually see what I'm doing. That would be really good. Too high, too high, too high. Oh, that's fantastic. You got the update, Kim. That's awesome. Hey Lucy. Yeah, oh yeah, I've trust me, I've looked on Etsy, looked at on the um, um I've looked on all the uh uh sites and everything. There's a ton of things. And so Val says designing sounds amazing. Never really thought about what I want to stitch that isn't out there. Let me think about it. Um so you guys are different. So here's the here's the funny thing. Um I was talking with another designer, and uh, oh wait, Ninat says super exciting. I love medium-sized projects. I had a, I had a really uh, like long delay with my chat there for a second. Um, Ninat says super exciting. I love medium-sized projects, bold colors. A good chart has plenty of thought. Oh, the symbols, yeah. So symbols aren't so similar, exactly. And I that's definitely something about it. And I'm also trying to. Um, uh, yeah, take into account, uh, yeah, it's funny, now that I'm learning how to design, I see the mistakes that others have made that are fixable if you just pay attention to those things. So, yeah, medium-sized projects. And when, Nini, now, when you're talking medium-sized projects, what kind of stitch count are we talking about? Hey, Nanette. Awesome, awesome, you got the update. Um... So one of the things that I'm actually doing, and we're seeing how well it turns out, is I take a lot of pictures of my patients at work, and I, excuse me, I've got some really like awesome shots of some various animals. 120 by 120, awesome, thank you. Um, really awesome shots of some animals, dogs and cats, that are very striking photos, um, and so I just need to like, I'm working on the the the, like the Photoshop aspect of it to kind of make it pop a little bit more. And, uh, but I am uh, trying to get them to a point where you'll, when you stitch them, it's going to look amazing. Um, that's awesome, Kim. I'm so glad you got that. I'm so glad you, yeah, I'm so glad you're doing that. That's so awesome. Um, and so, uh, so there's that. And then I've gone back and I've looked at some old vintage things. Um, you guys know how much I love vintage stuff. And so there's a lot of stuff that's out there that um, definitely looks like something from 100 years ago. And um, trying to figure out how to get it to a proper shrinking it down and stuff. It just takes a lot of time to really um, take all the steps that are necessary to um, uh Nature, landscapes, small to medium-sized charts. I think I'll probably offer a wide variety of them. Um, and so, but yeah, trying to get, 
trying to get some stuff that, yeah, I'm working on it. It's I'm making I'm making some progress. Nature and landscapes. I love nature and landscapes too, and uh, I want to try and incorporate some of the stuff that I've just literally just taken on my cell phone um, around uh, around Colorado and stuff over the years, and uh, seeing how I can uh, adjust that and modify that into looking like a really gorgeous, unique looking piece of art that you'd want to put on your wall. And so, um, but, uh, now the question I also have here too, because I'm wrestling with this idea, but I think the right thing to do would be to offer physical product as well as a PDF download, especially something that you guys could use with pattern keeper. Um, I mean, are there any of you guys that would actually want a physical product or does everybody go digital nowadays? Val says, my favorite finished piece I've done is a scene of bluebells carpeting a woodland grove. <sighs> really, that's awesome. What count did you do that on? PDF all the way, says Nitty Nat. Digital is much easier. Um, yeah, see, I, I think the same way. And so, you know, 16 count. Okay, cool. Um, and how big was that piece, Val? Do you remember roughly like what the stitch count roughly was? Or at least all you have to do is tell me like roughly the the this inch size when you finished. Um, oh, birds. Um, I, uh, I wasn't going to uncover the birds this morning because I got up so late and I'm like, well, if I uncover the birds and then cover them back, they're going to be really loud during the stream. And my husband was trying to be helpful for me because he knew I was trying to get ready to stream and he uncovered the birds. And they got really loud at first. And I was like, oh, no, they're going to be loud during the stream. But then I covered them back up. And uh, I've been talking softly. And I think that's been I think that's been good. Um, 8 by 10 finished. Let me make a note of that. I'm going to have a piece of paper somewhere. Piece of paper. 8 by 10, 16 count. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, what's up? Botch is here. Buy the hair. Um, you would like a physical copy, so when the electric goes out, you can still stitch. I get you. So I'm definitely going to offer both, and so I'm definitely going to offer both. And then the, the next question is, I've got the blog. Can I set it up so where I can just sell everything off the blog, or is Etsy the way to go? And so I know everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people do Etsy. Um, Few power cuts, yeah, totally. Val says you'd like a physical copy because too much screen time triggers vertigo for you, and I've lost my computer and power too often to rely on just digital anything. Knitting that physical copies are such a drama to get to Australia. PDF allows for instant gratification. Oh yeah, man, and and also the the cost of shipping nowadays. Gee whiz, Etsy takes too much off the sellers. I think so too. I think so too. That's why it's kind of nice that I already have the blog. Um, and so, oh, I'm sorry. Your Wi-Fi is really slow. I'm buffering all the time. Um, try, um, try lowering the, the, can you lower the resolution or is it already lower on Twitch? It allows you to lower the resolution. So sometimes the, the, you can, you can stop that buffering if you lower the resolution. Um, so you get charge fees on Etsy. Yeah, you do. You get charged per listing, and then they take a percentage, uh, what is it, 5% off of every sale, and that includes shipping. So it's the total sale, basically. Um, and uh, so that's the that's that's the hard part. So, yeah, I would probably sell, I support more direct. Yeah, I probably would just put it, I'd have to redesign the website again, probably. Um, not redesign it, but just move um, some of the, I probably may, I really ought to make cross stitch the focus of the website as it is. I was trying to branch out into a bunch of different, um, uh, I was going to widen the, the craft um, genres on my blog. And so I have articles on knitting and uh, 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 gosh, even diamond painting. And I have resources for all that. <clears throat> but yeah, I would probably put it somewhere where you guys could see, but, um, okay, cool, man. All right. You know what? Focus on what you can get done, dude. And so, uh, we'll see you later. Good luck with everything. 
and uh, we'll catch you next time, okay? Um, Kyle says, I think it would be great if you could sell off the blog. The issue might be getting the word out into the marketplace. Exactly. So that's where, and again, that's where having the YouTube helps. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's the, that's the hard part. <sighs> Yeah, there's a lot to think about. There is a lot to think about. What's up, Maya? How you doing? So, yeah. Or we could put part of it on, um, we could put a few projects on Etsy and then point everybody to the blog for the rest. Um, I was looking at uh, um, Bendy Stitches, Michelle Bendy uh, Stitcher, and um, her the way she had it set up because she has a blog as well, and so she sells um, uh, products on there. But for digital products, she directs her um, people to Etsy. So yeah, it's hard to say, guys. I mean, you know what? The good thing is you can kind of experiment around and figure stuff out. Should I be stitching? Should I be stitching? I'm not thinking I should be. Did you guys see? Okay, I, every time I go to stitch, then I get distracted. Did you guys see all that damage that happened in Iowa with the, uh, what is it, derecho? What the heck is a derecho? Why is that suddenly a new term in my vocabulary? Birds. The other day, one of the birds got his wing caught in the cage. And uh, he's making this crazy noise. I'm like, what is going on? And then when I um, went over there to look at him, I just kind of had to help him push his wing back in. He's fine now, but poor little guy. Um, the great thing about Etsy is the taxes, different states, different amount. Is that great or not great? I always thought, I always thought that the... No, I guess you are right. The taxes that you pay are the taxes where you live, not where the seller lives. Ooh. Ooh, that's that's a really good thought. Lindy Stitches just Lindy Stitches. Oh, I love Lindy Stitches too. Just moved all of her physical items to a dedicated .com site. Her Etsy shop is now only selling PDFs. I got gotcha. you. Right, right, the taxes, yeah. And so, yeah, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking about taxes, but for some reason I had in my head that my taxes would be taxes for me, like the sh where the shop is located, I pay the taxes. But the, as I put my dumb face on, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know the, I know the tax stuff. And so, yeah, because we do it, I do it at work all the time. I just never, never thought about it. There's got to be, there's programs though. There's definitely e commerce stores that do that just fine without using Etsy. And so we'll figure it out, guys. First up is, is figuring out designs. And so that will work that are varied enough that you guys will be like, oh, cool. I've thought about designing for a long time. I just thought it was going to be too difficult for me, but now I've kind of gotten, I think I got all the steps down. I just got to hone my technique, hone the technique down. Whew, I feel very well rested today, which is very unusual for me. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, you know, I just didn't even think about that. I guess because I just have a physical, physical business that, yeah. Okay, but you know what? I'm sure that there are uh, more than enough programs out there. Because I mean, you got like Shopify. I'm not doing a Shopify store, but um, yeah, like WooCommerce, PayPal. PayPal would probably take care of that. Um, Oh, anyway, I was going to talk about Iowa. Um, 
All right, Nitty Nat, you're in Australia, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and you need to be ready for school run and work tomorrow. Actually, today. So good to catch me live today. That's awesome, Nitty Nat. So, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Happy stitching, and good luck to you. Good luck to you tomorrow morning, too. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but did you guys see the Iowa, man, the damage that was done? I actually follow um, a couple of farmers that are sort of spread out all over. I used to follow this one farmer that's smack dab right in the middle of Iowa. So I went back and looked at his channel and it looks like his local co-op and everything were, were like, those were the pictures that made it out of all the grain bins that were like, well, a go either gone or dented in or whatever they were. I mean, I was like, what the heck? Like, how is that even possible? Um, I mean, how... <laughs> What is a derecho? Why is this suddenly a thing? It's because it's 2020, right? And so, oh my gosh. Um, PayPal is good. They send you a statement at the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd go with PayPal for sure. Everybody knows PayPal. But anyway, I mean, I don't know what these guys are going to do because there's going to be even more farmers that are going to be done farming after this. That's just going to be, it's going to wipe them out too much. Because the, the thing was, is that it was, it's basically August. It is right before, like later this month, early September is when a lot of them do their corn harvesting. And so the corn was at its, pretty much its full height. So when it's at its full height of whatever, six, seven, eight feet or whatever, that wind just blew it all over. And um, it might just end up being a soggy mess. Um, they may not be able to do anything with it other than maybe corn silage, which is where you kind of, you don't separate the corn, you just mulch everything together, which corn silage is great for feed, but it's not great for human consumption. So... Let me make sure I'm streaming in. Mm, properties. Yeah, okay, I am streaming in the proper, proper thing here. Just crazy though, just absolutely crazy. And then my favorites farmer my favorite farmer to watch is this kid called 10th Generation Dairyman. And he's a, a farmer, a dairy farmer in um, eastern Pennsylvania, like just outside of Philly. And he, uh, um, it's pretty much like him and his dad, and then they have some workers that work for him. And they have about two, three hundred dairy cows. Plus, they're just getting ready to harvest their corn silage and soybeans and everything else they harvest and so this time of year is really busy well his dad hurt his shoulder and tore up his shoulder really bad so he had to have like rotator cuff surgery and whatnot just last week and all this literally like right before the busiest time of year and um so the kid is like i'm sure the kid's just well i say kid he's probably 22 23 um i'm sure he's just like overwhelmed with just all the work he's got to do. So we won't be seeing videos from him for a little while. But uh, hey, what's up, Cheesy? Um, but anyway, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for a lot of farmers, man. Those guys and gals work their butts off. And they're at the whims of crazy nature. Crazy nature sometimes don't care how much they damage things. There we go. Do, 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 do. <sighs> I would say so too. They are essential workers, farmers are. I mean, I, you know, we're already having issues because of the viral thing with supermarkets and everything. And now on top of that, you know, you've got a harvest that has just been decimated, especially in our most 
I mean, I love corn for crying out loud. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to, I don't know what they're going to do. I haven't heard a lot either. So I'm like, <sighs> anyway, there's another channel that I watch. Um, they're a lot, they're a massive operation. They're Welker Farms. They're up in Montana. So they got some rain, but they didn't really get the damage that Iowa got. Um, but they're getting ready to start their harvest. I, it looks like it's, it's peas. Um, it also looks like there's some wheat, but maybe it's all peas. Maybe I'm just not understanding what the crop truly looks like when it's like that. And they were talking about how it's going to take them a full month to finish harvest. And, um, because of just all the, uh, all the fields that they have up there. I don't even know how many acres they have, but I'm like, man, busy time of year for those guys. That's for sure. It's nuts. Nuts, I say nuts. There's that, there's that, there's that. It's hard to stitch in white when you're not like right on top of it. Got a highlight. Whew. Yeah, massive farm. I'm I'm betting it is too. I'm betting that they must have tens of thousands of acres or something because they were talking about how there's going to be thousands of man hours to actually get everything done and so I haven't watched their channel that much but I'm going to have to keep an eye on them because I'm actually looking into doing some patterns for farmers too my grandfather was a farmer and his entire family like up until like my mom's generation farming went back centuries with them. They were um, some of the first settlers in Indiana. So they settled in southern Indiana and they did cows and pigs and and hay and wheat and just all the different things that you could do. And so they, um, you know, they've, they've been farming for forever. So when I was a kid, um, for up until I was probably in high school, every summer and Christmas time, we would go up to Indiana and spend it on the farm. And so I got to see a small farm, how it worked. My grandma, my grandma, my grandpa had beef cows. Um, he had pigs at one point, but he switched to beef cows before I can remember. And, um, so we'd go up there and, and help him feed the cows. And, um, by the time that I was old enough, he had really kind of cut back. He had a lot more, but he had like, I don't know, maybe like a thousand acres at one point or something. And, um, he used to do hay and, and, uh, bale it and then sell it to local farmers. And then, um, and then he started leasing out his land to others to, to farm. And so, Hey, Arca, trying to watch it. Um, but, uh, so yeah. So anyway, so there's a lot, I mean, I feel a real affinity for farmers. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can't, yeah, I just, it's so hard to think about what they're dealing with right now. It's so hard to imagine, I should say. It's just ridiculous. Morning, your power is out. It's hard to type on your phone. Your power is out. Are you, uh, where are you at, kiddo? Are you in the Midwest? Lightning storm near San Francisco. Holy cow. Hello, 2020. Nanette says, I help out my teens. I drove a combine during the summer for your grandfather. I had an inside cab with air conditioning. Thank goodness. I spent 14 to 16 hours a day in August. Wow. Oh, man. That is, that is truly amazing. Truly amazing. Unbelievable. I see. I, I definitely feel like I was born a, a generation or two too late. Um, I would have loved to have been a farmer. 
Well, I do like my technology, but there's part of me that just, yeah. Maybe it's just in the blood. I can just feel it. And it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. Thank God for that AC, right? Exactly. I can't even imagine like back in the day when farmers, or even back in the day before uh, they had machines to do it and they had to do it. Well, then again, they didn't have the huge operations, but um, the um, the 10th generation dairymen, those guys are, they literally are 10th generation. They've had that farm in that area for generations and they still have equipment. There's a couple of their harvesting equipment that doesn't have AC in it. And um, they're just using this old equipment and it's just, they talk about how hot it is. They literally like run the thing with the door open, um, which is not great because everything's blowing around. And so, um, but I hope he's doing all right. We have a little bit of a harvest when we do the honey. Last year it took us, but it only took us two days last year to do, to do the harvest, but it was two very long days. Um, this year, it'll probably take us, if it takes us two hours, I'll be shocked. Because we're just not going to get very much. And that was part of the desire to move was because we thought, you know, if we got some land, we got some place where we could put the bees, we could really make sure they had plenty of moisture, they had plenty of flowers. Um, there just isn't, there just aren't any flowers the way there normally are at the ranch right now where they're staying. Val says, my family teases me I must have lived on a farm in a previous life because even though I grew up in a city, you're so farming, so fond of farm animals. Exactly. Um, Arca says, my grandparents on both sides were farmers. I'd love to do that, but we don't have either farm anymore. Right? Yeah. Yep. Speaking of farming or slash gardening, uh, pulled some more zucchini off of the uh, plants last night. And um, we're getting, I think we're getting to the end. We didn't get, we didn't get a ton this time, but um, not this time. I mean, we, hubby just experimented with some different things. Um, we're going to try zucchini chips uh, later today and uh, see uh, how that goes. Just going to slice them really thin, uh, coat them with a little bit of oil, and then um, probably throw some cayenne pepper or something, something spicy on it. And uh, throw it, uh, um, throw it in the air fryer that we have, and uh, give that a shot. So I figure we can uh, get some veggies in us and uh, utilize our own zucchini. The peppers are coming in. He has a lot of, I think they're jalapenos. I thought I saw a bell pepper in there though, but only one. Um, I'm not even sure if he knows exactly what he planted, but we actually threw a bunch of it. We have a like a little front up um, by our sidewalk where most people would like plant flowers, we planted uh, peppers and uh, squash. And so that's coming up too. So um, it's pretty funny. Can you do squash chips? Is that a thing? I've only heard of zucchini chips. I have no idea. I'm not usually a squash eater. Birds. Crazy time for this redhead. It was harder on you being a girl, the whole bathroom thing. I'll bet, dude. I'll bet. Oh my goodness gracious, that's crazy. I would have loved to have done that. My grandfather, though, growing up, he was very, very particular about what was men's work and what was women's work. And I so desperately wanted to go out and help him with the farm. I was by far, of my male cousin and my brother, the absolute one that was the most excited about the farming. But he would constantly be like, you can't do that, you can't do that. And I'd do it anyway. Um, so it was, it was funny. He is a good guy. I love him. And he's my, he's still like the guy that I look up to or that I did look up to. Um, such a good guy. And I wish that I would have known him better as I got older, but we didn't go visit as much, especially once I was in school. 
And I do regret that. I do regret that. Squash chips. I want some squash chips. Oh, so I'm trying to uh, also listen to, I'm up to book what, six or seven now on the, um, <clears throat> on the last uh, Apprentice series. And uh, Scribd has restricted my listening. And uh, so I have to wait another week before I can listen to the next book. I'm so sad. So I started listening to Wandering In yesterday. And uh, I got about a chapter in. That's about as far as I've gotten. So I'm experimenting with some other different books right now. And um, but I want to listen. To, and the stupid thing is, I can't find Last Apprentice on any other, like even my local, um, my local book, uh, audio book, whatever, Overdrive, my library, like they don't have it. They're so lacking in the fantasy sci-fi genre when it comes to books, I guess. I'm all over the place with my stitching. Highlight. 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 Nice. Your grandfather thought it would keep you out of trouble and he knew where you were. He's a very smart man. I would agree. I would agree with that. What's up, Ansys? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. One, two, three. My elbow slipped. Very cool, very cool. Yep. The quieter I get, the quieter the birds get. So that's cool. Tilt this down a little bit. Do Any sleeping tips, anyone? I have not slept properly in weeks, and it's really starting to grate on me. I can't get off till like 4 a.m. Ay, ay, ay. Dude, I do melatonin. I do melatonin, and so that's that's how it works for me. It's the only way I that's the only way I can sleep because otherwise I'm I'm not sleeping. I just don't. Um, Ansa says been all over the place recently. Getting back on an even footing now, though. That's good. That's good. Um, it depends. I take anywhere from five to 10 milligrams to be perfectly honest with you. I know that seems like a lot, but I also don't go outside very often. So I'm not getting a lot of natural sunlight triggers for myself. If you've never taken it, I would start with five and so, and see how it goes. But it works pretty well for me. What it really helps with is that when I wake up at like two o'clock in the morning, it helps me go right back to sleep, which is good. brain wrapped around this here. I'm not a fan of stitching with white on white Ada. It always seems like it's harder. I mean, I have to do it, but...
You take six milligrams? Yeah. Yeah, up it a little bit, see how it works. Now the other thing I would recommend is meditation before bedtime. Um, even if it's just five minutes to like reset your brain so that it stops thinking. Um, and then the other thing that I do, which I know it's going to sound weird, but I sort of practice a, it's, I guess it could be a form of meditation, but it's one of those things where like as I'm sleeping, I try to like, almost like in my head and my eyes, like I try to fall backwards, like almost like I'm falling asleep, but like I fall deeper in my brain. What is going on? They must be using the cuddle bone. They don't do that very often when I'm in here, but it's too funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I try to kind of fall backwards. The other thing that I do is I try to focus on something that makes me happy. And um, because I find that if I'm thinking about like back in the day of my, um, when I was really getting a lot of cross stitch patterns, I would actually think a lot about, I'm gonna do this pattern and I'm gonna do this pattern. And if I'm thinking about happy things, my brain is, is e more able to allow me to fall asleep than if I'm thinking about things that worry me or anger me or something. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Nanette's right. Bedroom needs to be dark, no light. Bedroom needs to be cool temperature, no phone, glass of milk, lay down in your bed, and don't do a thing. Count to 100. And she says, I hate doing one on white Ada. When I was stitching the Welsh flag, it was awful. Yeah, gotcha. Oh, nice, Val. Val. Val visualizes floating on a pond in the summer and watching a bird soar in the sky above me. Sometimes what I'll also do when I'm meditating is I take a walk on my grandparents' farm um, from when I was a kid. And I'll start at the end of the lane by the road where the mailbox is. And I'll start by checking the mailbox. And then I, I start to just walk down the lane. And then I'll walk into the lane and then I'll walk around the house and I remember how everything is. And uh, that helps to really calm me down too. So you gotta, you gotta find that, that happy spot and focus on it. Um, there's just way too much in the world that is trying to take your attention. And the key is not letting it which I'm still working on that. Let me switch over to my purple here in a second because I'm getting kind of tired of this white. Even though I'm getting a lot done, it's kind of tired. Or I could switch over to the blue that I got here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm stitching that right. I'm going to just stop on the white right now because I don't think I'm stitching that correctly. Let's go to purple where I can see things a little bit easier. That's a tiny little bit. What's up, Allie? How you doing? We are just, we are having a ridiculously chill stream where I am stitching the old-fashioned way on a hoop, getting some docks in progress done, and just relaxing. The total relaxation thing. The other thing that you could do, um, Botch, is that seriously, I've had people tell me that just put on one of my streams and just listen because it puts people to sleep. And not in a bad way per se, but just in a, you know, calm. I, and I listen to audiobooks too. My husband and I are big audiobook fans, so we always have an audiobook on. Um, especially if it's an audiobook we've listened to a hundred times. Just having something else going is um, is 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 enough for our brains to like the part of the brain that wants to keep working on something. It can kind of list, half listen to that book and allow the rest of the brain to relax. That's my theory, at least. I'm sticking to it. I'm come down here. We're going to put a little purple here.
Oh yeah. Smooth, comforting voice. Yeah, you don't want an audiobook that um, has music in it or, or any sudden volume changes or even any voices that might wake you up. Um, one of the ones that I like is um, A Short History of Nearly Everything. It's nonfiction and it just allows you to just kind of chill. But we're big fans of The Martian. Um, although that can sometimes, I have to fall asleep before a certain point. We were listening to um, uh, Neil Gaiman also has a great voice to fall asleep to. But you have to watch which one of his books that you listen to because he tends to, uh, sometimes he'll do voices that are a little bit more out there. And then you can't, uh, then you suddenly so suddenly wakes you up. But everybody's gonna be different who they think is calming. Hey purple Sharon's here. Morning morning. Morning Coop. Oh wait, I just missed you coming in here. Hold on. You're working overtime for work and working on your hummingbird cross stitch today. That's awesome. Speaking of purple, good morning, everyone. <laughs> you literally just woke and saw your notice. Oh man, I slept until eight today myself. You slept till oh, you slept late, dude. Um, you're not gonna stream today. I understand, dude. Stephen Fry, Harry Potter. Is it Harry Potter read by Stephen Fry? So not. Um, oh yeah, really? Because we um, we listen, we have one book, but it's um, by the other guy. What's the other guy's name? Um, but the other guy. So does Stephen Fry tend to just stay nice and calm? Because I'd love to listen to Harry Potter, but the voices for um, the other thing is just really hard. Shelby Foote, Civil War doesn't sound like a topic to fall asleep to, but his voice is amazing. Yeah, he's got that nice southern, that southern, that deeper southern drawl. You were up till 0600. Oh my gosh, dude. Jim Dale, Jim Dale, yeah, um, Jim Dale is one, and Jim Dale does another book that he's very good at, but his voices are so distinctive that it sometimes will wake me up depending upon what section I'm in. But yeah, Coop uh, puts a timer on for 30 minutes and falls asleep before the 10 minute mark almost every time. Certain books do that to me, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like typically up until the last time I listened to it, I always fall asleep before the world actually blows up. And, uh, but this last time I actually made it into the next part of the book. So now I'm like, uh, what's up, bookworm lover? Hello, Doxy. Yeah. Nice. Nanette says, what a great memory. I would get up early and walk to the paper man house to get the Sunday paper. Remembering the sound of that dime dropping in the metal coffee can has always been one of my favorite sounds. Yeah, totally. You go back and find a, you know, find a memory that, that works and just focus on that. Ellie Belly! Ellie Belly! Afro Stitcher, what's up? We are having a great Sunday. At least some of us. Hey, what's up? What's up, crazy? Sorry, late to the party. That's okay. Everybody trickles in whenever they can. Feels like there's a lot of people that are having a hard time sleeping lately. Um, I was having a hard time earlier this week, but then last night I slept like amazingly. Um, oh, nice. So Jim, uh, Stephen Fry does voices. Wait, are we talking about Jim? Uh, Jim Dale does voices for every character, but he does a lot of different ones. Is that Stephen Fry we're talking about that, that still does deep voices that they're relaxing? Oh, that's also Purple Sharon. It's great, great way to begin the stream. Or great way to begin the day. Nice. Get me some. Too hot to sleep. I slept better than the last two nights. His temperature's gone down a bit. Stephen, that's, yeah, I have to have my, my room has to be cool. Um, Stephen Fry. That is good to know. I wonder if we can get that Stephen Fry version. Um, that would be nice if we could, because as much as I like 
um, Jim Dale, he is hard to go fall asleep to because he has very, very distinctive voices for his stuff. And he also does Night Circus, and sometimes that annoys me when he does Night Circus, just because the voices of the 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 bratty, the bratty people in the book, he's so good at it that it just annoys me when I hear him talking and talking to it, or talking to it, or talking about it. There you go. Sleep with a fan in the room, white noise, nice and cool breeze. Absolutely. Ooh, Stephen Fry reading Sherlock Holmes if you like a mystery. Oh, that would be awesome. what I'll focus on stitching today is I'll focus on getting this <clears throat> bottom part of this this wing part right there um, focus on getting that part done Parker says, it's super toasty here. <clears throat> We're not used to the heat. My apartment 83 right now and probably will get really hot if the power doesn't come back on soon. San Fran, right? Whew. I can't even imagine, dude. The narrator does make the book. Yes, it does, Sharon. Yes, it does. We have, I have definitely stopped listening to books before because I'm like, ooh, I don't like that narrator. All the way up here. Oh, Afro Stitcher says Stephen Fry is good on Sherlock Holmes, but when I got the book from Audible, the parts were disorganized and you got so frustrated. Really? Oh, man. I wouldn't think Audible would make a mistake like that, but that's good to know. Wow, went out about your power went out about an hour ago. Crazy thunderstorm passed through this morning. First rain in months. Dang, dude. Yeah, it's like why is it that like some areas of the country are getting drenched, and then other like my family in in Georgia is like they've gotten drenched, but like here in Colorado, like we're in a drought again. It's terrible. Terrible. Oh man, I'm so jealous. Gearing, you're gearing up for another thunderstorm in about an hour or so. You love thunderstorms. I do too, man. You just don't get them. And where we're at in Colorado, they're so rare. They're so rare. To actually hear thunder during a rainstorm is, you can count on one hand the number of times it happens in a year and usually have a couple of fingers. Um, Ellie Belly says, we have a couple more days, 90 to 100, then back to 80s, thank goodness. Yeah, we've got we've got a couple of days low 90s, and then it creeps back into the 80s. Crazy says, I have my Stephen Fry Sherlock Holmes on your MP3 disc, which you love, but your player has packed up and eaten a disc 
that it says doesn't have it says it does oh that it says it doesn't have so I've got to organize a rescue mission for the disk and a new player and then you're off again ah oh, dude yeah rescue mission go in there find it it's there it's there very cool very 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 cool very, very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. All right, we're going to come over here and do some purple. We're going to come all the way up here. Oop, I almost started with a loop stitch, which I'm not going to do. Oop, not there, not there, not there, Jules. Here? Here. All right. What's up, Pam? Everybody's a little slow today. Don't worry about it. We're all kind of like, we're all having, I think we're all having kind of a off kind of week, weekend. Oh, Ansys, I'm so jealous. You've had insane thunder and lightning storms in the UK for the last week. And you guys don't, do you guys get a lot of those really like harsh storms like that? Val says, grandparents had a screened-in porch and used to sit in grandfather's lap to watch the storms. I always feel close to him when I can just sit and watch a storm. Oh, that's awesome, dude. That's so awesome. That is cool. Sharon says, I used to sit on the front porch with your mom in Bakersfield growing up. It's so fun. Oh, yeah. Man, I miss storms. Oh. As a rule, lots of torrential rain in the UK, very little lightning, but this week, this last week has been insane. Huh. Crazy, dude. Crazy. <laughs> you were terrified of the storms when you were little until your grandpa told you the thunder was angels bowling. Aw, that's so sweet. Kim says, it's cloudy here in Texas, but I can't wait to move. I got you. Kim, where you're at, do you get um, tornadoes down there? I mean, I know you have tornadoes in Texas, but where you're at, do you get tornadoes? Yes, this is hail is family, fairly normal for us, but not the size of golf balls like it has been in some parts of the country. Man, yeah, we'll get pretty pretty bad hail here. Arca says, we really get this sort of weather here. It's caused a bit of chaos, lots of power outages, and several lightning fires in the very dry hills. Woof, crazy. Crazy. Yeah, this is way better to stitch with a color now. Maybe it's also just the location of what I'm stitching, but this is a little easier to get stitching done. Ah. Yes, you do, but not very often. Well, that's good. my um, there it is my marking pen ah 
Got my hair caught in that. I have a, some kind of a, probably a drink stain here. I don't care right now. Um, ah, going off my, going off my mark. I'm going to grid a little bit more. Kelly Belly says, husband was working in the oil fields in Texas. Got to experience the golf size hail. Ooh. Oh, man. That would be painful. Hopefully not on his head. I am like, I'm just chilling. I'm like totally chilling here. And I'm kind of going off the screen a little bit. I'm like all hunching down. But it's time to stitch. When it's time to stitch, time to relax. I'm going to make some good progress on boxing this week. You walked in it on the way home back when you could walk. I get you, dude. Walking in the hail. Woo. Walking in the rain is fun. Especially if it's super hot and the rain is nice and cool. Sometimes we'll get that here in Colorado where it'll be hot, but then the rain comes, the moisture comes over the mountains, and it's cooled it tremendously. And so when the rain comes down, the rain is cold. And uh, that's really nice. At least I think I remember that that's really nice. It's been a while. Couldn't live somewhere where that had tornadoes and giant hail. Tornadoes are terrifying, right? Tornadoes are terrifying. Absolutely. Happy just having to cope with hurricanes. Thank you. Oy, we all have our we all have our particular weather disturbances wherever we are. No problem. No kidding. No kidding. So what's everybody stitching on today? We haven't even talked about that. What are we working on? A few people have thrown out what they're working on, but what's everybody else working on today? I got Dachshund from Gecko Rouge UK um, going here, making some progress finally. Got some Reaper done earlier and got to get to work on some rainy water in place for sure here soon. All right. Working on your ambulance piece, your NHS piece, nice. And it, it has a very deep root cellar. That's good. Hey, Bridge. Tiny Modernist Mystery Halloween Sal. Ouija. Is it Ouija or Ouija? It's probably Ouija, isn't it? Very cool, very cool. Noah's on deck. Noise. Drinking coffee. I was trying to wean myself back off of the, 
the diet stuff, but I can't, coffee is just, I can't do coffee. And uh, so the weaning will have to happen another day, <laughs> another time in my life. Because I need to be awake. I was so sleepy for like two weeks walk going for the mornings at work. I was so sleepy. It was just dumb. Cross Stitcher. Working on a Paris cafe and later we'll work on rainy water places. Well, yay! I'm stitching it for my sister who loves London and vintage stuff. It will be your biggest project ever attempted. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Fantastic. Have you just started it? Um, or are you further along? Ansys is working on Lavender Field by Ann Logan, trying parking for the first time. Good luck with that. Kim's trying not to fall, having a bad day with balance. Dude, every little bit. Daffy's working on Game of Thrones. Ellie Belly's working on Pandemic. Nice. Arca's working on your hate, stitching white on white. I know I'm making progress, but it doesn't look like it. I get you. Good gracious. Legs falling asleep. Ah. Yeah, they are working on cool projects. I love the diversity. I love the diversity. My stomach is growling. We're going to go and do a food truck today, a barbecue food truck, and try it out. Oh, man. So we were talking, was it last week when I did my Sunday stream, and we were like, oh, we're going to order barbecue. My husband's going to go pick it up. It's going to be awesome. Man, we had issues left and right with that place, um, unfortunately. Uh, it was a place that was in closer to Denver, and I'm not going to name it by name now. And so, but... Uh, we had ordered, and then they called me, and they said, oh, we don't have this side. It hasn't come in yet. So obviously they don't make their own sides there. And so we had to get a different side. And then my hubby didn't – he doesn't always know exactly what I order. He just goes and picks it up. So he, when he got home, they had my barbecue, but they didn't have his barbecue. So – and it were way too far away to go back and pick it up. And it was just – and even my barbecue was just disappointing. And so it just wasn't very flavorful. Um, yeah. So that that barbecue day was pretty bad. And so yesterday the um, uh, yesterday uh, my husband grabbed a small pork shoulder and uh, we were able to smoke it and have uh, some barbecue sandwiches last night. So it's kind of a barbecue kind of day. And so... Um, Today I think I'm going to do smoked wings. Uh, rarely ever get smoked wings, but I think that's what the barbecue place actually, believe it or not, what they actually specialize in. We'll see when we get there. The menus online are all over the place, so we'll see. Um, you started this, okay, wait, let me go back up since I've been blabbing. Um, how do I say your name? Enor Single? S Single's been working on a change of season one from Mystic Stitch. Cool. Kim started the second book of Harry Potter. Congrats. That's awesome. Um, Arca says, power went, right, went out right as my coffee finished brewing. Perfect timing. Needed your morning caffeine. I'll bet. Botch is, uh, how long am I here? I'm here for probably, let's see, it's almost 10. Uh, I got about half hour, 45 minutes left, to be honest. I, I stick to about two hours. After that, everything starts to hurt. So, wow, I didn't realize I've been streaming for that long. Um, so yeah, 10 o'clock right here right now. So probably about half hour, 45 minutes, yeah. Um, what else going on here? Nanette, working on Barry's Birds by Misty Purcell, or Purcell. She's giving all the money for this pattern to go to her nephew who has some type of cancer. Oh yeah? All right, let's see what we can do here. Does she have an Etsy store? I've not heard of her. Berries, birds. All right. 
What's up, Constance? Working on Lake Baikal from a Riolis kit. Nice. That's awesome. Rainy Water who plays Cross Stitcher says pretty much just started it, 5% done. My videos are very inspiring. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. I need to make some serious progress on it. Um, so I gotta get some stuff done. Cool, cool, cool. Well, let's, okay, I'll tell you what, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Did I even bring my phone with me? If I didn't bring my phone with me, that is highly unusual. I don't have my phone in my pockets and it's not next to me. Okay, well, so much for looking at it. Can't believe I didn't bring my phone in with me. My poor phone. Now I'm going to have phone withdrawal. No, I won't. I'd be fine. I'd be just fine. All right, let's grab some more purple. Pam says, ugh, the three of the last colors I needed for this project must have been loaned to other projects. Drat, too lazy to search them out now. Aw, oh, man, don't you hate that? That's a royal pain. Yeah. That's why I went to community, community floss for the most part. Because that way I don't worry when one project takes it. I just put it back in the community floss. And by community floss, I mean that all the projects have to share it. So they all have to be nice to each other and share all their stuff together. Stitching. Stitching. Pam says switching over to doing your nails and watching me stitch. Nice. That works, dude. That works. Just stitch nice and slow. Nice and slow. <sighs> oh man, Nanette's having issues with some fabric that she's using for a piece. It might be too small. Oh man. That's the worst, especially if you've gotten a fair bit stitched. What is the different between difference between English Ada and then just like what we would call regular Ada here in the States? Is there a difference in how it's put together or who it's made by, or I do not know. That was a big sigh. That was a big sigh because I'm like, I'm already feeling myself wanting to go back to sleep, which is not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not with as much sleep as I got last night. No sorry, Baba Rooney. All right, Ellie Belly. Oh, yeah, you'll pick blackberries in the garden. Nice. Fun. Have fun. Uh-oh. Somebody's barking down the, the way there.
groups. Pink, pink, pink. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. Sharon says, I picked some basil on a tray to dry outside yesterday and it's so humid out it's still all soft and floppy. Nobody likes soft and floppy basil. No. Val says, before we head out, for those of you who use paper patterns, how do you store them? I need to redo my system and I'm not sure what I should do. What I do is I put them into, where is my stuff? I put them into these plastic sheet holders, which this one's all torn up because it's the old rainy water we place thing, but I, I put them in here and um, if the project is small enough, I'll just put one, um, one project into each sheet protector. And, um, and then what you can do is if it's in one of these sheet protectors that has um, the holes in them, then you just get like a little notebook thing and just pop them in there. So that'll work pretty well. You had to get out the big count glasses. I have a whole box of English Ada from a friend that lives overseas. With English Ada, you have more counts. Also, it's that coloring really well. And it was free. Yay! And you use a clipboard when you use them. Yeah, I, I got to pull my clipboard back out. I normally don't fold them over and do stuff like this. But uh, I've gotten out of working with paper patterns because of pattern keepers. So, um, oh. Oh, stretch! Oh, every little bit helps. Every little bit of stretching. There we go. Nice. Use a clipboard when you're working on them with a big old magnet to hold your needles and scissors. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, thankfully I didn't pack up all my cross stitch stuff. I still have I have my folders and like my um, some of my patterns that I have that are non pattern keeper at this time that I haven't started yet. Because someday I would like to get to like ice skating. The, the project from, uh, there's an ice skating project from Cross Stitch Collectibles that I really like. I love the look of it, but it's going to be some, at least a couple of years before I get to it because of all the issues. So, that I'm having, period. I should pull, well, my plan was to pull, when I get my new um, frame, roller frame material stuff, I was going to put a pot carry shop. I was going to hope to, but I just got to figure out how to make my, um, my fabric a little tighter. And <laughs> that free road style file cabinet. Nice. Does anybody need a, a coffee refill from Sharon? Sharon, what kind of coffee is it? What kind of coffee do you drink? Oh, Nanette, 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 Nanette. So we're going to discuss. I talked about it at the beginning of the stream, but but there's so many people that have come in since then. So we've had a massive hiccup in the whole moving procedure thing. So the uh, in the process of trying to figure out how to like move out, move into one house while we take care of the other house, um, we started working with this new bank. And in the process of working with this new bank, I discovered, I rediscovered, I had forgotten that I had actually... Um, committed us to not moving six months ago for like a year. Um, we have our house tied up in the financing for renovations at uh, the practice. So I'd forgotten about that. How does somebody forget about something so big like that? I have a lot going on, so I forgot about it. But um, so anyway, so because of that, I don't even know if we can actually move and sell this house until... Um, yeah, I don't think we can until we refinance the deal at the practice, which could take another year. 
Um, so the handyman came over and that went great. We were able to, um, uh, we were able to get an idea of a lot of projects that could be done and that we can still do. We can go ahead and do those, um, but we don't need to rush about them. And some of the larger projects, like the painting and things, um, we can spread out some of those things and do them later on. Um, and we'll get there. It just it forces us to slow down, which is not a bad thing because, man, we suddenly, like, just... Like we made a decision and we just started like it was a snowball and it was picking up speed big time. So um, because of that, we'll we'll have a better planning. Uh, being forced to to slow down is a good thing, and that's going to allow me to actually um, focus on some other things, which will be our next topic. We're going to go back and talk about again, um, but yeah. I can take my time and do the small stuff and I can get more stitching done. And so, and I can, the problem is, is that literally I think Wednesday night I packed up a bunch of floss and other cross stitch stuff that I had like in my little floss organization system. And I'm like, well, that'll just be packed up for about three months and then I'll get it back. Well, now I'm like, yeah, that could be a year. I need that stuff back. So, um, we're going to run over to the, uh, on the way, uh, to the food truck today, we're going to stop by the storage place and try and find the, I know what the box looks like, so it should be pretty quick, but to find the box with my floss in it so and bring it back. So, um, all right, let's get caught up here. Uh, <laughs> I like Sharon says, Free Roadside is a great brand. A file cabinets, I would agree. Absolutely. Um, Sharon drinks Green Mountain Dark Magic for the Keurig. Ooh, Green Mountain Dark Magic. If I was going to drink coffee, is a Keurig the way to go? Or should I just drink plain black coffee? Um, Constance says, put, put paper patterns, ah, put paper patterns in a sheet protector and then in a binder. When using a paper pattern, I'll put it in a clear sheet protector and a clipboard. Then I use chalk marker to mark on the plastic sheet to mark off the stitches you've done. Oh, that's a good way of doing it. Um, you don't want to write on the pattern. I understand that. Val says, that's a great idea. I already keep my finished charts in a binder. I can just start another one for the one that's waiting to be kitted. And I love the chalk idea, but I can picture the dogs drooling on it and making it disappear. I'm space limited where I can store things. Sharon says, I do the same, but I mark in highlighter and mark the stitches to do in yellow and then done ones in blue. I train my eyes. I print expendable copies to mark on. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Nanette says, in the military, we call that throwing and going. Save the thread from storage. Yeah. Val says, I print working copies because I still use a pencil to mark off what I've done. Too many issues with using a highlighter when I have to frog and then not finding my place again. We all have our things. We all have our things. Uh, Constance says, nice. For some reason, it's ingrained in me not to mark it up. I was the same when I went to college, and I was shocked when people were highlighting their textbooks. Oh, dude, totally. Yeah, I was. I write in my textbooks, too. I still have, I still have textbooks. Well, I have textbooks at work because I have to have textbooks. But, um, yeah, I'll write notes in the margins and do all kinds of things. It's really nice. What's up, Winian? Hello. Pam says, Keurig is the best for variety. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. Awesome. All right. So let's discuss. We've already discussed it. For those of you guys who have been here the whole stream, you're going to be like, oh, man, we're going to talk about it again. Um, but uh, for those who are newer, um, one of the things that I've been working on while I've been doing all this other stuff, and now I'm definitely going to be able to focus on more since the move seems like it's not going to happen for a while, um, is I'm actually learning how to design cross stitch. And I hope I'm learning how to design it properly um, so that it's user friendly, that it's unique and it's fun to do. And so um, it is uh, something that I am really happy about. I, I, there's a part of me that uh, the creation aspect of it is a lot of fun and working with like Photoshop type programs and with WinStitch is what I'm using and then there's some other ways of going about it um, that's, um, something that, uh, I'm really kind of interested in. Now, crazy is asking what sort of designs. That's the thing. So I, I was checking in with you guys earlier to see if there's anything that you really enjoy. There's a lot of variety out there. I think the bottom line is, is that medium sized projects 
like about 120, 120 by 120, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, I am biased towards large, large cross stitch, but um, you know, trying to find some smaller artsy um, type, or not even find them, but just find normal pictures and make them artistic in some way. Um, right now, I've been actually working on um, patients of mine that come in that I've gotten some really awesome photos of like their faces and um, trying to find ways to sort of enhance. Right now, I specifically have a cat that I'm working on and the cat has like the one of the best expressions that I've ever seen. It's a great picture, but the eyes are a little bit shaded and I want to I wanna work on how to sort of brighten them up a little bit and uh, make them look more distinct. But um, but make them smaller, you know, make them something that uh, uh, it's not going to take you months and months to, to finish something. So definitely been working on uh, been working on that and uh, put a lot of hours into that in the last couple of days, especially since, you know, the whole moving idea has kind of like come to a screeching halt. So um, full coverage medium. Yeah. So or even full coverage small, but just finding something that will actually look good. Um, so I'm, as somebody who has been stitching for a long time and who has a channel and we talk about stitching all the time, I don't want to put out stuff that A, looks like everybody else's and B, is not good. And so, um, you know, I want to offer you guys something different, like I always try to. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, I, I hope I'll have something that I can share with you guys in the next week. Um, I don't want to share it until I have like the every part of the pattern done and I want to have it in a way that we can do it on PDF as well as a physical pattern. So we're going to we're going to see how it goes and likely I will probably just sell it right off of the blog. Um, for those of you guys who may not know if you're newer to the channel I do have a blog at stitchingjewels.com. Um, I've had it for going on three years now and there's a lot of really cool stuff that's on there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's, I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. Um, one of the things that got me interested in designing is um, a couple of things. One is that, um, you guys are gonna find this funny, but one of it is I've been doing articles lately where I'm just collecting patterns from all over the internet. I've done an article for like Harry Potter, for Star Wars, um, other things that I can't think of right at the moment. And um, I'm pulling all these like designs that people have done from all over the internet. And I'm like, that's really cool. That's really cool. And some beautiful things that people have done. And I'm thinking, I think that uh, that would be really fun to learn how to do, especially kind of learn a Photoshop uh, type software. Um, and uh, Part of it is also because uh, Ronnie Rowe told me to do it. And uh, we've been talking lately and he's like, you need to be doing this. And uh, so um, he's helping me out a little bit, get going, and or actually a lot. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. Do you guys think, and this is something that he says, oh yeah, because I'm going to talk about this in the next Thursday video because I'm going to ask people to basically... Um, what's the word? Mail bomb him. Um, he doesn't think that many people actually complete his designs. He thinks that, um, that the ones who actually complete them are the minority and maybe they are, but I don't think they're a significant minority. Uh, I think especially when it comes to his patterns, um, he hopes that people are doing them, but he just never, he never knows that people are doing them. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, oh, thanks Val. And thanks Marina. Um, the gift sub and then the continuing of the gift sub. Um, so, uh, let me roll this up here because I think I've missed a few things. I don't think my sound is up. Oh, it's up. It's fine. Um, and so, yeah, so what I'm going to ask for people to do is take a picture of their Ronnie Rowe and email it to him because he said the other day, what was it that he said? Um, and I know somebody on here has done it, but he said that he knows, he's like, I know that I'm the only one who has done, um, his native American piece. And I'm like, no, you're not. 
some one of my subscribers has done it and so uh i was like i told her to send a picture to you and uh so uh yeah your music teacher's house right and so yeah so yeah and when he finished the u.s capitol i think he doesn't i think he really just doesn't understand how many people do his like how many people finish his pieces so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask for a full-blown email bomb and uh and just reach out to him i'll give the email out um uh, during the Thursday thing, but during the Thursday video, but I, yeah, I'm like, you're going to be surprised at how many people actually do your pieces. And so anyway, so he's gonna, he's, it, I figured it'll be a lot of fun. And so, um, all right, let's go back up here. And that says garden of the gods park is in my backyard. Those would be amazing. I've never seen any stitching with that subject and it's in your backyard. It is. I mean, I've actually been down there. I have pictures of garden of the gods. Um, and so, uh, it would be pretty cool. Um, you know, there's, I have pictures from all over, uh, Colorado. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, it would be really cool. The trick is to, that I've been working on lately is resizing them down so that you keep the detail but you're not stitching quite so much. So we'll see how it goes, but. Nanette says, you've been on amazing digs at Colorado. Craig off of Highway 40 is amazing. Argo Mill, I don't know these. Um, and what kind of digs are you talking about, Nanette? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I've never been to Craig. Um, is it the Dinosaur Monument area? Anyway, the fun, funny thing about Ronnie Rowe is that he's like, well, I know you've done my music teacher's house. I'm like, Ronnie, I have three of yours finished. I say I have two framed, one not framed. And uh, and he was like, really? And I was like, yes. And so anyway, I just think it's funny. And so uh, it makes me want to do one of the the um, the little Westy one that I have of his. Uh, that would be cool. Stretchy. Stretchy. I guess I do have the nerve up here. I didn't think I did. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Sorry, guys. The birds are all like, Ugh. scary. Can't believe I don't have my phone up here with me. What was I thinking? All right, back to stitching. Colorado is beautiful. Growing up in Georgia, I always was attracted to the idea of living in or near mountains. I always wanted to do that. And so when I finally got to a point where I was done with my training, my education, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm going to Colorado. For some reason, it was just my call. It just, they called me. And um, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, that I would never move from Colorado, but I definitely would never move back to the South because I don't like the heat. I wouldn't mind moving someplace that gets a considerable more rain though. That to me would be more fun. So we'll see. We'll see. Bridge says, now I'm going to have to check out his designs since I've been talking about him so much. Dude, Ronnie Rowe designs. Um, the pen and ink series is brilliant. And um, if I have my phone, I could show you guys, but I don't have my phone with me. Yeah, seriously do it. What the man does with simple black thread on white Ada is gorgeous. I mean, and it's gorgeous. And so Pacific Northwest, if we want rain and mountains, it's where you were born and raised. We've thought about it. We've definitely looked at Oregon and Washington state. I've even looked at Northern Idaho. Um, but yeah, Crazy says, I don't know if the more unusual things to be found in America would be something that would appeal to others. Like things like the world's largest ball of string, largest rocking horse, the car hinge. Yeah, the car hinge is pretty cool. If you could do the car hinge and make it look like it was a drawing, like convert it to like, um, like it looks like somebody painted it or drew it, that would be cool. Don't do Idaho. Why should I not do Idaho? What's wrong with Idaho? South of Seattle. We were looking, um, is that what we were looking? We were looking east of Seattle and um, the eastern part of the state. 
And then Oregon, we were kind of looking all over. And we even looked at Montana, actually. Western Montana, um, there are some places around there that we really liked. Don't do Eastern Washington, South of Tacoma or Olympia. We would prefer it. Okay, thanks. Good to know, good to know. It isn't the same kind of state. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, I know that it's a completely different uh, environment. It's like that in Colorado, too. I mean, it's, you don't realize it's like mountainous, city, suburban, and then like a good third of the state is probably just farmland. Flat plains, pretty much. What's up, Belly Belly? What's wrong with Eastern Washington? Uh oh, we got a fight brewing. It's a different part of the state. Okay, time out, Nanette. You're a biblical archaeologist? How do they not know this? You're working on your master's right now. You dig and dig, dive and cave, dig, dive and cave dive. You're a glorified rock hound. Dude, that is amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Can I say it's amazing? It's amazing. I think I'm stirring up the pot. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's not as mountainous and rainy as I said I wanted. Nanette is awesome. She does all the things. That is awesome. She does all the things. I like it. Oh, no worry, Bridge. I, I also misunderstood, and so... Nothing's wrong with Eastern Washington. Because don't you live s north of Spokane, um, Ellie Belly? And so I always, I, I get people confused as to where they all live. But um, rain and mountains. See, I would love rain like four days a week, maybe five. I would love rain. Part of it is because I haven't had any uh, in years. And so when it happens, it's so much fun. And I get a lot of work done inside the house when it's doing that. Now, when we ever do move, we're going to be moving further south. And supposedly, where we're going to move, they do get more rain. Well, where we think we're going to move, they do get more rain. So we shall see. We shall see. You're starving? You're Hank Marvin? Crazy says you're Hank Marvin. Hubby's home. Can't wait to see what you're going to design because I'm going to stitch it. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Thank you so much. All right, let me go back up here. Ellie Belly says four seasons, more lakes and mountains than you can imagine. Nice. I like the idea of four seasons. I really do. Rich says, I know what Denver's like, and like I said, like in Western Washington for 28 years from my life, and spent time in Eastern Washington too. So if you want rain and mountains, you want Western Washington. Ellie Belly lives in Spokane, three fourths of an acre on the outskirts of the South Hill. That's nice. Cascades are far away though. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, good gracious. You guys are so funny. You guys are so funny. What are you doing over there, birds? Making some weird noises. Oh, totally forgot to tell you guys. Did I tell you guys that the jerkfish died? I told you if jerkfish, jerkfish died, right? Well, what else died but um, Pleco died. Pleco died as well. So all my animals are just filtering away. It's like they knew we were going to move, and they're like, we're not going to handle the move, and they just died. Um, so uh, Groot is the only um, water-dwelling creature that has left, that is left. And so... Yep. Yeah. 
So, but Groot's doing great. And so I'm just going to leave him in his little tank. He's doing fine. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put, put anything else in the big tank. I got the 50 gallon that I got to, I'm going to clean, I got to clean out completely. Whew. But yeah, so a lot of, a lot of stuff's going on, guys. A lot of stuff is happening. A lot of weirdness going on. Well, I don't want summer, although my husband wants summer. So I gotta, I'm going to have to acquiesce to him a little bit. Nanette says, I try. I had a life-threatening accident in a driver's ed car. I had one year in the hospital to think of all the things I want to do with my life. I have a notebook, and I wrote in every day in the hospital. So I remember how bad things can be. So you wake up running every day. Oh, that's awesome, dude. I'm glad you're okay. That's awesome. Are you talking about me, Sharon? Not simplify my life and not replace, not put new things in for a while? Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I've been kind of, I mean, and we still have, everything at work still needs to happen. And there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen there. So I need to refocus and, uh, and just really just work on stitching, designing, work, and then I'll leave the repairs and stuff to hubby. We'll get the handyman in to do some stuff. But I'll leave all that stuff up to hubs. He can, uh, he can focus on that. Gives him something to do. He is really getting into the idea of stained glass, learning stained glass, though. He was, uh, he actually ran out the Hobby Lobby last night and then realized that they didn't really have anything that he needed um, to start stained glass. He has a class on, he has a class next Saturday that he's going to do. And um, so that's going to be fun for him. And then um, from there, he's, who knows what he's going to do, but uh, He's, he's really getting excited about it. And when he gets into a hobby, he really, I mean, you think I get into a hobby. He really gets into a hobby. He does, he's the kind that does all this research before he even gets started. So he's just, he's doing awesome. What's up, Kansas City Shuffle? You have a question. Is there always missing an H in your word, Dachshund? Uh, Dachshund. I'm from Germany and dog means hund. So Dachshund. Yeah, I spell it wrong all the time. And so I literally like, now that I'm like, I'm paying more attention to it, but I realized that I've spelled it wrong so many times. Um, I don't know what it is. It's like a little mental hang up for me, but, uh, I, I always leave out that second H. The universe is telling me it isn't time yet. It is telling me it isn't time yet. You're correct about that. Um, but I think that the universal universe was also saying, clean up your clean up your dang house. It's a mess, and get some projects done. And uh, but yeah, that that definitely is what it was doing. <clears throat> keep you on the yeah. It's so easy to fall back into being complacent without something to remind us of our trials and keep us on the positive track. Yeah. That's right, Nanette. Inspire the rest of us. Yep. I, I mean, I feel the same way. Like, I can't just sit around and do nothing. I can't just sit down and just do TV. It's like I have this urge to, like, hey, Sharon, can you spell? How about spelling right? <laughs> How? Hosu. House. That's funny. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I spent most of my life not really doing anything, and it's only been in the last, like, really, like, three years. All of a sudden, I'm doing everything, but I didn't, I wasn't like that in my 30s and stuff. I just sat around a lot. I felt like I couldn't do things, or I just didn't want to do things, and now I'm like, do all the things. And that says, the only thing I will not do again is skydiving. I screamed all the way down. Unless your plane is on fire and I can't land it, I will never do that again. I would agree with you. Um, I, I enjoyed it in a scary way when I skydived, but I'll never do it again. Um, especially like you heard, like there was somebody that just died, some young kid in college or high school just died someplace. I forgot where their, um, the main, the main chute didn't open and they couldn't get the reserve chute open and they died. Um, and so 
yeah, I, I won't skydive again. That's not, to me, that's not anything that, that, yeah, I did it once and I'm glad I did it. I kind of, and almost in a way I regret doing it, but I mean, I'm fine now, so everything's fine, but. Uh, you realize you were mortal and now you don't want to skydive? Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts. I mean, it's fun, but it's nuts. So I think I'm just going to finish my purple here and then I'll probably call it a stream, kiddos. So hubby will be home soon. We're going to get some barbecue. What's up, Mercury? Mercury walked into the room. Mercury has entered the room. Ah. Oh, so you guys know the, uh, you know that high school in Georgia where they, they made the national news because the the seniors took a picture or something. They got all together, which is fine. I understand. They, should, you know, it's okay. But then they ended up having so many cases they had to shut down. That's actually the high school that I went to, and so that's the one in Georgia that I uh, that I attended, and um, I had a great dream about it last night too. And uh, I was I was weird, but uh, I was trying to find. I was trying to take somebody to it, and uh, I didn't recognize it because they changed. It's changed so much in the last thirty years. Um, but that's actually, that was my high school. And so, so that's how close, uh, my mom is to that kind of stuff. Um, they started school back up in Georgia and the county that my mom is in, it's Cherokee County, Georgia. They, they only had, I think just under 2000 cases for the, up until August 1st. They had been doing a great job of keeping everything under control. And since school started back up in the last two weeks, they've had another thousand cases that have become positive just in the last two weeks. So it is exploding now. School starts tomorrow here. And, uh, but the difference is, is that I don't know if there's very many people that are going full time back to school. And if they are, they're wearing masks, and we're going to see. That's a story for those class reunions. I've never been, I don't really, I'm not really, I'm never going back to a class reunion. Um, I, you know, my 10-year class, the funny thing is my 10-year high school reunion, the one that I would have been most likely to go to because I was still in Georgia, was the year, was the day that I graduated from vet school. And for me, I just don't hold any, you know, I don't really want to go back. Um, it's just, uh, there's no reason to. Oh, okay. Whoops. Um, where do I change my stream title? I go to uh, my my Twitch channel, so twitch.tv slash stitchingjewels. Let me pull it up here. Let me make sure I got it here. I go into, uh, I do go into stream info. Let me pull it up here and see. So I go into stream manager, and then when I'm in stream manager, then I go over to edit stream info, and um, I click on that, and then I change the title. And then I click done. That's how I announce my new my new stream. So yeah, that's how I do that. Sharon says you went to your tenure and you never returned. I mean I know I understand for some folks who maybe they end up living in the same area that they went to high school in. That's a big deal. They they still know their people. Um, they still know their their classmates and and maybe having some come in. It's a good thing. But you know that was that was a small part of my life. And 
that was 30 years ago. And honestly, I wasn't somebody who hung out with people. You know, I did sports. I did the band. Um, I did a lot of things. I knew a lot of people, but I never really stayed tight with anybody. So even now, like on Facebook, like I have had to go through and for a while there, I was letting old high school classmates be on my Facebook page. But honestly, like I've gone through and cold, cold, a lot of them. Um, I'm going to sneeze. No, I don't. Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't. I fought that one back. Um, but I'm going to sneeze in a minute here anyway. Um, but yeah, I, um, but I, I was just, a, I was a loner in high school in a lot of ways. And so for me, like my vet school reunion is something that I would go to at some point. And, um, at some point I might go to it, but I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a get together kind of person. I mean, we do this, but I don't sit around with even friends out here and do stuff. But, um, Nanette, schools in your County are all online. You're trying to be safe. Exactly. Go for it. I mean, in Georgia, they're not even requiring masks. They're recommending them, but who's going to wear a mask in high school? Like what, you know, unless all the cool kids are doing it, you're going to get made fun of over there. So I need to go through my Facebook and call like another 50, 75 people that I don't know who they are. I don't see, well, not that I, I know who they are, but I never see their stuff. So, you know, I gotta get more private, especially the more and more and more you hear about like how much of your info is like potentially out on the internet. Like, I don't want that. Oh, I said I was going to finish this. Let us finish this, and then we shall finish the stream. Kids at the bus stop aren't wearing masks. Yeah. I mean, I know they're not perfect and they're not 100%. And if we had something better, we'd use it, but we don't. We just don't. Um, yeah. Just want to take care of people. I want to take care of people. But anyway, well, that's not a bad stitch count for uh, for this. Not a bad stitch count. All right. All right. I think I might upload this one today. Um, I, you know what? Maybe I won't even do a stitch with me this week or release a video. Maybe I'll release a different video. Um, I should have recorded, but I, since I didn't record on Thursday, I kind of forgot to put my video up to be published on Saturday. And I've done so much Reaper lately that I think people are getting tired of Reaper Stitch With Me videos. And so even though that one, I got a lot of stitching done on it. Um, but I think this one might be a little better to put out there. Um, but I may save these for next Saturday and just do something different. Record a video today. And so, I don't know, maybe I'll do a video where I ask people about uh, design and I don't know. We'll figure it out. You were on DO, DEA, Guam High School, Go Panthers? What's DOD? Is it Department of, was it Military Guam High School? That's crazy. Ansys says they were talking about doing a 10-year reunion a few years ago, but you didn't really pay attention to it. The other ones, well, I'm not even going to say that. Let's, let's, let's not go there. It's the company, not the project. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Val. Thank you for doing that. Yep, Guam is a U.S. territory. Way in the Pacific. All righty. Military high school. Crazy, dude. 
Crazy. All right, guys. I think I'm going to be done now. Got our two-hour stream. And so going to do a little bit more cleaning. That's the thing is we were doing all that cleaning. Now we're like, mm, we don't have anything to clean anymore. That's pretty nice. Um, going to go see what the dogs are doing. Go check down my phone, see where my husband is. And, uh, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. What do you guys think? Um, so uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and that you very much enjoy your stitching. Um, Arca, I hope your electricity comes back here soon. Um, and everybody else, uh, you know what? Watch out for that weather. It's a little nuts. And so you see a nap in your future. Share and get some sleep. And I hope everybody's sleep schedules get back to normal. And so, yeah, you're very, you're very welcome, Val. I, I hope you all have a good week. Um, we'll see where we're at on Thursday. Uh, we actually should have another giveaway on Thursday. And uh, and I'm also I'm gonna go check out this. Um, I wrote down the the fundraiser, the Misty Purcell Berries Birds. Um, I'm gonna go track this down and go see what's going on there. So uh, I think that would be cool. And um, yeah, have a great week, guys. Um, thank you so much for everything today. And um, we'll see you next time soon. Nope, nope. Uh, Sharon Purple be Purple cannot stream today. She is exhausted. She needs some sleep, and she is going to. Uh, you have a doctor appointment Wednesday, so no stream there either. It sometimes that happens, dude. Real life gets in the way. So, Nanette's gonna go clean some more fossils. Your post on your Instagram. Take care. I, I should find my old fossils. I got fossils from Kentucky. Um, just like you know, yeah, I'll have to find those and so maybe show them on stream sometime. I hope I still have them. Um, anyway. Alrighty, guys. You all take care. Thank you so much, Daffy and Coop, Anstis and Winnie and Nanette. Oh, I gotta adjust my back. Oh, and I will see you guys later.